Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I am your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor. He is still in Canada. He will be back here in a couple weeks. Um, but if you're tuning in right now, whether it's audio or video, take a moment, subscribe to the boys. Uh, we've been living at the top of the charts, and, and it's obviously because you guys help us out a lot. If you can, right now, down, make sure this episode is downloaded. Clearly, it probably is if you're listening to us. If you're watching, or again, if you're on Apple or Spotify, hit that follow button, that plus sign on Apple and Spotify. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, just take a second. Just take a second, click out of the live chat because I know you're in there having fun making friends. Um, and just hit the thumbs up. Drop a little comment to the boys. Uh, and also, throw a subscribe. Make sure, make sure you're subscribed to us on YouTube. Uh, but before we get into the episode, we have to bring you our presenting sponsor, the Chevy Silverado, the most durable, reliable vehicle on the road. The Silverado is as strong and dependable as the people who drive them, all of us, because I'm included in that. Dude, I took, my, I took my Chevy home this weekend, and not only do you get the side eye and everybody's kind of, you kind of have that wow factor coming in uh, to, those fourth, to the 4th of July party that we had, which was a banger, by the way. Uh, I won one of the three tournaments in Cornhole. Uh, but aside from that, I don't even want to brag about that. I also went to the cha- the finals a couple times. I did lose. However, we all know how that works. Um, but I drove my Chevy, drove my Chevy to Missouri. Obviously, Missouri is like a state of like trucks, right? You're either driving the Chevy and or something else. Uh, but I pull up and everybody's side eye and turning their head, looking at me like they want to touch the truck. They want to sit inside of it. They want to get in the bed. They've, they've heard all the news and noise about uh, having the best industry first bed of uh the heart of a truck is in the bed of a chevy silverado my favorite part of the chevy and it's kind of like a maybe a shout out no free shout out uh, type deal but my favorite part of the chevy when i'm driving is honestly it's hot as balls out there dude and throwing on those ac that ac unit for your seat like it blows it kind of feels like you're peeing your pants a little bit because it's like really cool it's a weird moisture type thing but you don't have the low back sweat you don't have the butt sweat or the swamp A word because I know we can't cuss on these uh, ad reads with Chevy because they're a great, very respectable, reputable brand. Uh, but that is kind of my, that's my favorite part of the Chevy. I'm driving around. It's very hot. I throw on the AC unit on the seat instead of the heater. And I think it's I think it's magical. But the Chevy Silverado is modern and advanced with a ton of grit, a partner in getting things done, especially when it comes to the heart and soul of a pickup truck. The bed. I've already talked to you about that. The cornhole units were sitting in the uh, back of the bed. People were carrying it out. People were complimenting the bed left and right. Uh, Jack, our boy Jack, who's in the back, the back of the bus, shout out the boy Jack. He is tweeting photos of Rich Eisen every day until Rich comes on the bus. And the minute Rich comes on the bus, Jack is going to earn himself a Chevy Silverado. So we're giving away Chevys, dude. Like we're shouting out Chevy from the mountaintop each and every week. Go check the boys out. Go to a local dealership near you. Let them know that the boys sent you. I think they're going to have a little something in store for you because we're a little bit more national now. And Chevy, the, the, the dealership around here hits us up all the time, letting us know, hey, send people our way. We like to support Freeland Chevy. That is our go-to dealership in the greater Nashville area. But the Silverado is strong, advanced, dependable, and hardworking, just like you guys. We love them. We appreciate them. Big hugs, tiny kisses to Chevy. Uh, but let's jump into the episode. It's a, it's a little different. As you guys know, we've been facing some adversities with Taylor not being here, doing an interview, keeping the segments alive with the shout out, no free shout out to the week, the tear talk. We have Taylor chiming in with AirPods or whatever headphones he's in out in Canada. He's got service. He doesn't have service. It gets a little shaky. The audio with the uh, tight end you, we've gotten uh, figured out. The uh, audio, I believe, will be way easier on the ears this time. I appreciate everybody kind of tempering me down, saying it's not as bad as you think, yada, yada, yada. But look, we chase a high standard of busting with the boys. And we've been doing this for a long time. And we know like people are coming after us. People are trying to sabotage our audio. We're not going to say who we think it is, uh, but people are coming after. When you're on top, people come after you. And like uh, somebody says it, dude, like it's way harder to hold that W at the top than it is getting to the top. Uh, But our audio should be a lot better for you guys. Tight in you, shout out the boys of tight in you for allowing us to come into their hotel room, set up shop, uh, shoot some episodes. This week, we will be playing a Foster Morrow, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Morrow, Morrow, Moreau. I don't know what it is, but Foster is a fucking stud. Um, we talk about a lot of different things. His time playing at LSU, a brawl he got into. He gives us some good war stories about fighting in the locker room of LSU. Uh, we talk about his uh, favorite players in the Raiders locker room, who his best friends are. I think that will cause a lot of controversy. Uh, our tier talk this week is favorite sport movies. So our tier talk, Sport movies, 
he was all time in, in choosing those. Uh, we also, his sport movie talk reminds me of when I first thought he had like autism or he was autistic or something. When I first met Foster, we talk about the time we first met. Foster's like that dude who's your boy that you bring around a new group of friends that you just met and you got to kind of keep an eye on him. Like you hope he fits in with everybody. Like <laughs> that's my dude, man. Uh, but we have a really good time talking about playing next to Darren Waller, his contract situation coming up now that he's going to, he's going into his contract year, playing in McDaniel's new uh, offense, the double tight end sets. If they can afford to keep everybody, I'm trying to, of course, I'm trying to get clickbait on him all the time. I try getting him to say that, so you would you agree that the Raiders are the number one team to beat in the AFC West? He wouldn't waver. We still might have to put that up as clickbait, and we might just have to put my name very small in parentheses via Will Compton and just say that it come, came from his mouth just to see what kind of traffic it might do out there. So if you do see that headline, and it's going like maybe it goes viral or maybe the photo's going around or maybe I just personally drop on my ins or my Twitter that Foster Moreau and I just quote him, obviously a misquote. For everybody listening, this will be our inside joke until everybody figures it out, out in the masses. But to the public, let's pretend like Foster said, we are going to be, we are the team to beat in the AFC West. Foster Moreau said this on our podcast. We are the team to beat in the AFC West. <laughs> That's gonna be that's gonna be fucking awesome. Um, we what else we talk about outlook on future planet LSU all that stuff, dude. It's it's a fun episode. Again, shout out Titan you and Pete Raskin and the boys at uh, Rubicon for allowing us to kind of set up shop and do all that. They took really good care of the boys. Uh, what else? So what we're gonna be doing in this episode is obviously I'm doing the intro right now. I did the Chevy ad. I'm doing the ads. Um, I'm gonna run through the intro and then since all the boys aren't here, it is a it is a Friday afternoon the week before this Wednesday that you're hearing it. I'm going out of town to go to a wedding this weekend. I'll also be partaking in Kittle Fest. That is tomorrow. That's going to be a fucking awesome time. But I will not be here when we usually shoot our episodes on Monday. So the boys, I'm going to do my shout out, no free shout out of the week. And then the boys, the back of the bus boys, they're going to, I'm going to intro them and they're going to cut in on Monday to do their shout out, no free shout out of the week with Taylor, probably on zoom. And then we will also get Taylor's tear talk that will be on zoom. So we are figuring it the fuck out is what we're doing. And uh, we got to be gritty. We got to, we're dealing with some adversities and really it's not the hard stuff other than people's schedules aren't lining up to have our routine programming. However, we're making it all happen. We're making it all work. And, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Is there anything going on, on on social media that I could potentially address within this past week? I hate when the lights chime in and I, 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 go, I go blank, dude. Because we all know I like to stir it up a little bit on social media and have a little bit of fun. Um, I'm not sure. People wanted to hear me talk more about the Barstool Yak case race. Uh, about how I thought it went and everything like that. I thought it was a great time. It's one of those situations where you hammer out 14 beers literally within an hour. I personally don't drink like that. Like I know I have this, is the word bravado, this vibe about me to where I just like slam beers. I'm like the hardworking throwback blue collar. I wear the monarchs and shit. But your boy, like I'm more of like a, I'll go whiskey and a cigar. If I can get to the part of the night where I'm tipsy and I can talk everybody, all the boys into having a cigar, that is my vibe. If I get tipsy, great. But I'm not trying to like slam beers and get hammered. Yeah, I, I sip on butt heavy. I drink butt heavy. I put all the games and I will partake and get hammered if, we, if need be. However, like I've never done a case race. I've, I can probably count on two hands the amount of times I've shotgunned a beer. Um, so getting in that case race, I knew there's a lot of like, you know, Shane is the machine. Comp, he's this big NFL football player. I'm sure he hammers beer. So I had to like, in my head, I had to lean into that identity of like getting a little bit of respect because there was a part of me that didn't know, yo, Comp, how are you going to perform in this case race? Because I had no clue. I can sit there and say, I like me. The reason I knew I liked me in that situation was because I know I can house food and I can house liquid. Like my stomach can take a lot of shit. I have that genetic to where you don't want that gene like you know you have the potential to just get huge not huge but mainly huge in the gut like that white caucasian muffin top rolling over the waistline like 
that beer gut. Cause I got my old man, he's, he's living proof. I can see it. He can eat at times. He can eat with his plate on his stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know I have that in me. So there's like that. I know I have that ability, but let's find out in this case race what it's about. And I knew Shane was the guy to go after. I tried pacing with him the entire time. I thought we might've been able to pull it off. Um, Nick and I shout out Nick. He was an absolute stud, uh, putting down beer. Shane obviously drank. It was a very one-sided. He was like LeBron with the calves, dude. Like Roan wasn't doing a whole lot. I want to say we might have been up on him. And literally, I've just heard this because I cannot remember the second half of that case race. We might have been up on him like a beer or two. And then Shane can just like obviously chug. Like, obviously, I got my little chug deal that I do. But I just, it was so hard to keep up. And I cannot remember. That's one of those things too. What's up? The bathroom break kind of changed it all. That's what broke it up. I think you guys were ahead. That's, where we, that's why I, I looked at Nick and I go, hey, start drinking because yeah. they all go on the bathroom break. We got two minutes. This is our moment to try and get them. Because like Shane, you just, that case race got done in an hour compared to like two or two and a half hours, their first case race. Obviously, they're having us in as guests. So there's this competitive vibe of who's going to win. You could feel the energy. Like the energy was a little off, like KB and Sass and uh, even Shane. Like they were like, you know, it's some energy that was like Shane was there kind of talking shit, talking big shit. And then KB kind of came in with a bad mood with his, uh, with his apartment deal going on. And I know uh, Sass, like my man was kind of like shaking. Like you could feel people were there to compete a little bit more, uh, which I obviously upped the tempo of beer drinking. But I can count on a few fingers, like probably three fingers, the amount of times I've blacked out in my life drinking alcohol, which I feel is like a low number being like a college, you know, college, like I would get after it, but I would always know when to slow it down and be like, all right, I'm going to get home and sneak out of here with an Irish goodbye or something like that. Uh, but that was one of my times where I just woke up the next morning, like five 30 in the morning and low key had no idea. Pants were down to my ankles. Sass was laying next to me. I kind of didn't know what happened the night before. What a- I thought you were going to laugh at that, Bloss. People are probably <laughs> sitting there like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm kidding about the pants around the ankles. But you wake up and then look in the mirror next morning at 530. I didn't have a hangover at the time because I had a little bit of an Addy. I had a little bit of an Adderall, like a half an Adderall. To me, that's, that's, that explains and justifies the little pee, the little boy that I had going on when I took my pants off. I'm pantsless. There's a lot of rumor swirling that I have the biggest micro penis of all time. Um, but I kind of wake up. I look in the mirror. My face is still painted. like. I didn't even know. People are talking about what happened the next day. Jeff D. Lowe apparently came in and did like a trivia. Stephen Shea and Shane were about to fight. I don't remember that. Um, but what were you going to say, Bloss? What, uh, so I know you kind of, in the group chat, we were kind of talking about who we thought may have won. And when my, my prediction switched when I saw what you guys were drinking, because I know you're, you, drink, you drink on the heavy side. You drink Bud Heavy. And I saw what you guys were drinking, and I'm like, he's so used to drinking a heavy beer. I don't think anybody's thinking about this, but the beer that they're drinking, I don't think is going to give them any issues. So that's kind of when my, my prediction switched last minute, when I saw what you guys were drinking, and I know what you typically drink. Yeah, I, I like that. When I was in the middle and getting in the rhythm, I was like, oh, the boy can drink for real. And who, I might be saying that, and people are like, oh, you have, still have no shot. That could be true. But I'm like, because you know, I said it last week, like, I'm trying to impress the old man back home. Who, like, my old man is winning that case race by himself with a dip in his, in his lip. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I was fired up. Like, obviously, I can get rowdy. I can get drunk. I can get all these things. But doing a case race and housing that much beer, I was a little like, all right, I'm going to look at Shane. That's the big dog in the room. I'm trying to hit him in the mouth and just keep up with him and let him know that there's somebody else in here. Because I thought Big Cat would house beer too because they won the first case race. And I was like, all right, they're the standard. Shane's coming in. I've seen the photos on Joe Rogan. Uh, but then after the days after the case race, you see the stuff swirling with my pants off and the fucking the little penis. That's never a good title to have as a fucking grown man, dude. Your little boy just perched, perched up on top of your balls. Like you never want that look, but it is what it is. Um, and you just kind of have the scaries of like, and I hope I wasn't acting ridiculous. Like I still haven't even really watched the case race. I watched to see where we finished and where I was in it, but I see the clips and everything else. I'm like, man, I hope, you know how everyone's just hammered and you just hope everyone didn't take you the wrong way or you didn't say nothing out of line. 
Because I know at one point we were talking about how much money we made, and it's like, fuck, dude, stop being gay. Yeah. Um, but from what it seems like, I mean, everybody's calling you the MVP of the case race. Because dude, that made me happy. That made me feel vibes. a lot better. I mean, you were like the peacekeeper of it all. Like, I, I don't think it was bad. Personally. You know the boy's all about vibes. It's, it's me not remembering that makes you, like, nervous because you just don't know how you act, like, when you just get fucking wild drunk. Again, we're all, we're all housing 24 beers, 24 times in, 240 beers within, by the team, the last team that finished, probably an hour 30. And we're all locked in a room just having, like, the high school, high school boy vibes, the bro vibes. Like, you just have no clue. There's a fight that almost happened. Like, that's typical, right? Um, but that is my update on the case race for people that wanted me to go a little bit more in depth about it. I apologize last week. Like, I still had the, like, the mascara, the eyeliner on my eye. I was hung over, dude. I was hurting. Um, but do we have anything else before we get into the, uh, oh, yeah, my shout-out, no free shout-out. So I'm going to hit this shout-out, no free shout-out of the week. I'm going to introduce the boys. They're going to have fun, and then I will chime back in and then introduce you into the interview section, which is uh, the Foster Moreau pod. Obviously, if we have people tuning in, that are down in the boot, dude, the boot state. Is that what it's called? Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the boot state. Uh, if people are tuning in for LSU, obviously I know we got Raider fans that chime in because I played on the Raiders, but if we have people who are chiming back in or new that are chiming in from Raider Nation that wants to hear about Foster Moreau, um, you can fast forward a little bit. I would love to have you sit here and listen to us. People have been asking about these new hats, by the way. These will be coming with our football drop in, in the fall. So in August, September, we'll be dropping these bad boys. I'm obsessed with this 90s version hat. It's got the green underneath. Like, I think these motherfuckers are going to sell. The best hat we've ever I think, Yeah, I think this is the best hat. But if not, we got some new merch, some new girl dads, some new colorways. Uh, this is a hoodie. Girl dad, obviously, it's not cold out, but the girl dad hoodies. And then obviously, I'm wearing my best seller pocket tee. Always got to shout out the merch, dude. This is our merch for, again, all the new people chiming in uh, and listening. But Let's do our segment shout out. Our shout out, no free shout out segment. Um, again, I'm going to do mine. I'll introduce the boys. They will be up here the next time you see them on camera with Taylor. But my shout out, no free shout out of the week is going to go to wearing your game jersey on Fridays back in high school. Dude, when you had the jeans, it was fall. You're wearing jeans, your favorite shoes to go with your game jersey on, var on varsity on game day, bro. Even in middle school, you wore your jerseys on Thursdays before your game. But, bro, that was a vibe. You're, you're paired up with the cheerleader. They're coming and giving you, like, the candy for, like, a, a little spirit week thing. Not like spirit week, but every week, if it was a home game, the cheerleader you're paired up with is giving you candy. You got a girlfriend, a girl, they're wearing your Letterman's jacket, but just the whole vibe of a Friday and wearing your game jersey. Ready to fucking go, whether you just get a pep rally. I don't know, but the vibes of a, uh, wearing your game jersey on Friday, it just brought me back because I was back at home over the weekend. We're driving by the high school. And of course, I'm reminiscing and having some nostalgia. And I'm telling my wife, Charles, just about how that was the old stomping grounds back in my day, you know, back when, back when the boy was playing. But it made me think of like, you know, you would have been wearing my, hey, baby, you would have been wearing my Letterman's jacket back in high school. I'd have been wearing that game jersey on Friday, stepping in the hallways. You would have been in the Letterman jacket. We'd have been walking by each other, kind of like looking. Maybe I pass you a note. You know what I mean? You're a little too nervous to talk to the women back then. So your confidence is in a note. I wonder if they even do notes nowadays. They probably just text all the time. But dude, that like folding up a notebook sheet of paper with a note in it. Shit, that could be a shout out. I know if you're shout out as well. But wearing your game jersey on Fridays, the day of your game, is my shout out. No free shout out of the week. We're going to now roll in. Uh, the boys on the back of the bus, Bloss, Jack, JP, and Garrett, they will be sitting on, in these chairs. They will be sitting up here. You will be hearing their shout-out, no free shout-out. And then also, Taylor will be zooming in and doing his shout-out as well. But big hugs, tiny kisses as always. If you guys are listening and you, you're enjoying the pod, you've been enjoying the podcast and our guests, um, throw us a like, subscribe to us, throw us a subscription, man. Uh, it means the world downloading, keeping us in the top five. It's been, it's been fucking awesome seeing this, thing, seeing this thing grow. And we also have something big coming up for football season that I think you guys are really going to enjoy uh, that it involves yours truly. But, um, yeah, here's our shout-out, no-free shout-out segment of the week. And then I will 
transition us into the interview with Foster Morrow. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our favorite segment of the week. The shout out, no free shout out. Let's give a round of applause, people. Here we are. Yes, sir. As you can yeah, yeah. see, um, a little bit more of a handsome cat is sitting in this beautiful chair today. But as always, we're going to kick it off with the shout out, no free shout out of the week to our man in the back, the guy on the sticks, the cop, the drop. Blas Hernandez. Here we go, boys. Let's go, Blas. All right. My shout out, no free shout out of the week. This week goes to when you're driving in a parking lot that's just way too full and you're driving around and you just get there, but you can see from a distance that that parking lot is jam packed and it's probably going to take you a minute to find a spot. And then you see that car as you come into that first lane, pull out. And open up right for you. So my shout out, no free shout out of the week this Is week. For pulling out goes to showing up at the right spot and getting that parking spot. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow. I swear the best shout outs are the ones you just don't think about. They're just small oh, yeah. luxuries in life. That is, they really are. And that's like it's taken a minute to kind of like hone that in, but it really is, Jack. I swear the more we do this segment, like, we live our day-to-day -day lives, and there'll be little moments where, like, oh, yeah. oh shit, go to the notes app. I have a note. I got to jot this one down. There's so many good shout-outs to be had. That's just phenomenal. I love that shout-out. Um, I guess we're moving on to uh, the other guy in the back, but currently sitting in the front in this big comfy seat, and I swear I feel good. I look good. <laughs> Jack McPherson. Give it up, everybody. Yes, sir, Jack. Hey, Jack. All right, so my shout out, this one's been on the back burner for a while and I've been really excited, but I wanted to wait for the right moment and I knew that today sitting in these chairs, it was the moment. So my shout out, no free shout out, goes to an old time thing. Back in the elementary days, your teacher goes, all right, kids, now remember tomorrow is show and tell day. And everyone goes, oh, shit, man, I got something good. So you go home, you think all night, you get whatever. It could have been a rock. It could have been your pet snake. It could be a new hat you just got. Who knows? And, and, and maybe you go to a school where, like, dress code's enforced, but that day you get to bring in your favorite hat and you can wear it just for that class. But mine, uh, so my shout-out is the show and tell. But obviously with this high tier caliber of a shout out. I always had to bring my own show and tell piece. Oh shit. Ooh. So Jack's taking the shirt off. Yeah, you better show and tell your piece. So <laughs> my shout out, no free shout out is the show and tell, but also it's it's a part shout out. I got to shout out my boy Garrett sitting right next Ooh, to me. Let's go. Because he got me this for my birthday. And I brought a vintage 20th anniversary 1974 Playboy. And back in elementary or middle school, if you brought one of these bad boys to school, <laughs> you were a literal god. You, you wielded the power to everyone. Everyone's following you around. You go to the bathroom. You might sneak a peek. And I wish that we could open this. But like I said, Garrett bought me this. It's still wrapped. It's in a, it's in a beautiful little plastic binding. And I refuse to open that because I'm going to keep it preserved forever. Uh, he better open but, it. But you, no, I'm not. But you can think with your imagination what uh, what beauties lie in this mystery of of fucking cover to cover. But my shout out, no free shout out, goes to the show and tell, goes to my boy G, and goes to this beautiful 1974 20th anniversary Playboy. That is me. Wow. I mean, <laughs> are you next or am I? <laughs> Yeah, I had to take advantage, you know. You only sit in this chair once in a lifetime, so I'm going to squeeze it for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, moving on, we, uh, we have our boy G Money, Garrett Hargis, on deck at plate. All right, this one's going to, I don't know, this is kind of, I was thrown off guard by that last one because my shout out, no free shout out, goes to the homie that always has the jumper cables. Oh. And today... My guy, Jack, had jumper cables and got my ass to work on time. Drop the headphones, don't matter. So, appreciate that. Oh. oh. Yeah. So, my shout-out goes to the homie with the jumper cables. It saves the day. Wow. A lot of love going around the room. A lot of love. A lot of love. Yeah, I specifically love that shout-out, but... um. 
<laughs> um, all right, and then we're gonna we're gonna push on to our boy JP, fresh it. off the tan, looking good, just from Fort Lauderdale, spend his week off nice. Come on, take us home, brother, for yes, for sir. the bus. So this morning, as Jack said, I just got back from a trip. This morning, I was running a little bit low on toothpaste. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, man, I'm about to have to hit this day just mouthwash only. Because I had been, I was pushing the limits. And so my shout out, no free shout out goes to when you are able to get that last little pit of toothpaste out of that, out of that bottle. You hit that roll. One more, one more day of fresh breath. That's my shout out, no free shout out. I love that. A lot of times you can make that one day last about five or six and right. it's the gift that keeps on yeah. giving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now to our humble leader out in uh, old Canada, Taylor Lewan is going to give you his shout out, no free shout out of the week. It's in his own, baby. Hey, Jackie, honestly, just the way you handled yourself out there, sitting in such a prestigious seat and able to handle yourself the way you did with the words that were able to flow without the ums, the buts, and the worrying about it, what am I saying? You did such a phenomenal job talking about cover to cover. I was inside that Playboy magazine the whole time you were talking, the way you <laughs> hey. presented that thing for me. Garrett, I was absolutely living in chaos, wondering if somebody had jumper cables, and my buddy came when you told me, JP, I've been there a million times. I've been there a million times when it's like just enough toothpaste just to make these pearly whites work a little bit longer and not have the stench come out. And Bossy, I've been lucky enough to be on this earth for a long enough time to see and experience what it's like when you're in a full parking lot and able to squeeze that last piece in there. My God almighty. Outstanding tears today, boys. And I hope mine brings it home as well. I, I was worried when JP started talking because he started talking about a tan. And you might think, uh, Taylor's going to talk about a tan. He's already talked about summer. I'm not talking about just when you get a tan. I'm talking about when you're out all day on the boat, which you can tell your boy was. You can tell I've been out there living that lake life a little bit. And when you're out there on the boat or you spend all day at a pool party and you get home, you see a buddy, you see a friend for me, you see your wife or my mother-in-law as it was yesterday and it sparked in my head. She looked at me and she goes, looks like you got a little sun today. And that feeling <laughs> when you get the, hey, it seems like you got a little sun today, you got a little kiss, didn't you? And you get that, I am getting tanner. Things are, and you do it right like you had the sunblock on because you know someday I'm going to be 70 and I don't feel like looking like leather. You don't want to look like leather. And that person pushes their lips up to your ear and go, Hey, let's see you a little sun today. That's when you know you're <laughs> fucking on the right direction. So my shout out, no free shout out of the week, goes to that gentle kiss of sunlight that comes to you and that little compliment that comes with it. Hi, that's oh, yeah. Hey. Hey. Well done, boys. And, and the beautiful part about that is even if you get that kind of backhanded compliment where someone tells you you got a little red, it doesn't matter because in mm -hmm. about a week's time, maybe two tops, it's going to turn into a tan and you're going to be sun-kissed looking just bronze and buff. I fucking love it. <laughs> mm, dude. Tone, tatted, or tan, boys. Those are the three options we got in this world. And so if I'm, I'm taking tan every single time. I love that. I love Man, that. I think there's some phenomenal shout-outs. Has Will already given his or... Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'll let you guys in on what Will's shout-out is and then you guys can react to it. So, obviously, Will shout it mm. out showing up in high school on Friday when you get to show up in your jersey. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Didn't live that life. That was but, it? Mm. Yeah, that was it. Always so stare at those dudes. Showing up on Friday or the game, the day before your game, right? And you get yeah, to show the day up. of the, the game, day usually. Of the game. Yeah, all Friday. Oh, Matt, that's the, the game, power bossy. move. Yeah. Oh, it's the day of the game, yeah. That's yeah, right, yeah, huge power move. And it's, it's strength in numbers. You're sitting there with oh, all yeah. your dogs, just sitting at the lunch table. You get the cool teacher who's like either an assistant coach or just rides or dies for the team. And he, he sees you in the class. He goes, hey, man, why don't you just take it easy today during class, you know? <laughs> get a little nap in before today's big game. Those teachers, I mean, it, it, that was a, a coveted thing, a, a privilege. Dude, so real. And you really knew who hated you the most. Those guys who hated the football team would just be eyeing you. And you're just such a 17-year-old jock. You're sitting there like, don't <laughs> give a fuck. You know, don't care. Oh, uh, what a... Hey, I don't know. Hey, my experience, Bro, my experience what was a different. That was. Oh. Go ahead. 
my experience was different because we only won in four years. We won like six games. So like once you're at like 0-6 in the season, you're like wearing the hoodie over your jersey. You're like, man, I, hey, I, nah, yeah. I, don't, I don't play anymore. You try to hide it. Close. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that is Damn. tough. Damn. Damn, bro. It is, it is a very outstanding feeling. I was going to talk a little bit more on that, but I'm going to leave that for another shout out, another shout out of the week. It is such a good feeling because it is a massive flex in high school. But the fact that you're doing it with all your boys, it's like a subtle flex all of a sudden. It doesn't feel like you're kind of being like, oh, I'm trying to be that dude. Like you just, hey, it's it's the apparel you have to wear today. That's just what it is. And you are feeling yourself out there, dude. And you know, you get the honeys out there. You know the girls out there jersey chasing a little bit. That they see in the corner. They know what's up. They see those sevens. <laughs> well, you got to respect those sevens now. <laughs> got to respect those sevens. Well, solid. yeah, is that is that it for today? Anything else you want to hit on, Taylor? No, nah, boys, I think overall, I think Tear Talk, I, I came at Will pretty hard in the beginning. I think more than anything, he's going to be sad because he's going to realize where he went wrong. And he's so good at Tear Talk, too. He usually does a phenomenal job. I think he really made up for it in his uh, Shout Out No Free Shout Out of the Week. And, boys, the way you guys have taken the reins and sat on that bus and looked so spectacular fun just outstanding might have a little branch podcast coming out for you guys you look so damn good out there jackie great job hand on the segment this week fucking love you guys i cannot wait to see you guys next week let's go yes sir big hugs tiny kisses we'll see you boys big hugs and the tiniest of kisses later guys we interrupt this episode to bring you uh an advertiser, somebody that is a big friend of the show, Roman. Shout out, Roman. No free shout outs. Look, boys, no one is perfect. Even the best baseball players strike out with the bases loaded. The best golfers sometimes three putt with the tournament on the line. Even your boy struggles at times. If you feel like you're coming up short in the bedroom, it's perfectly okay. But if it's bothering you, we have options. We have options on this podcast. All you got to do is go to GetRoman.com slash boys now. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for your ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. This is legit. No one's going to hear about it. They send discreet packaging for whatever they might prescribe you. Whatever the case is, you talk with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional who will work with you to find the best treatment plan available. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward and discreet. I just said that. It comes in like this black packaging. You never know it hits you. One time I got a shipment in, my in-laws were in town. They had no clue sitting right there on the counter. Take care of your ED without leaving your house. Complete an online visit today to connect with a doctor and take care of it. There's a straightforward... Got a call right now. There's a straightforward way to take care of your ED. Get Roman.com slash bussin' boys. Is that it? Scroll down. That's it. Back to this episode. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the shout out, no free shout out segment of the week with the boys. We're trying to build their brand, man. They get an opportunity to sit up on the bus, sit and get to have the mic a little bit. They're funny fucking cats, bro. And I, more people need to be following them on Twitter and social media. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now we're going to get into this Foster Moreau episode. Is it Moreau? I think Moro? it's Maru. Maru? Come on, you know yeah, you're butchering dude. that. Let me call him. Because I don't want to do the boy wrong. Hello? I don't know either. Foster, you are on Bustin' with the Boys. Your episode is dropping this week. Um, what I want to ask is, how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, man, great question. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, originally I thought it was Moro, like M-O-R-R-O-W. And, uh, small funny story, I don't mean to take too much of your time, but John This is your Gruden episode, take all the time you want. John Gruden actually asked me, uh, back in my rookie year during, uh, during training camp, he said, Hey, Moro, man, how you pronounce your last name? I said, oh, coach, uh, however you pronounce it is fine. He's like, nah, come on, man, give it to me. I was like, well, it's pronounced Moro. He said, all right, Moro. Love that from you, baby. Walked away. Didn't didn't pay any mind to anything that I had just said. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious moment for me. But every every announcer, any social media or any reporter has always said Moreau, like with a U. Um, but uh, it it really doesn't matter. 
So what is it? What what would you like? I mean, when you say the whole name, it it's a lot easier to say Foster Moreau, but uh, Foster Morrow is is I think what my dad always said. Foster Morrow. Yeah, but that's it's it's harder, man. It's a little more of a mouthful. Yeah, but we want to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Like we want to make sure people know that it's Foster Morrow. Man, you. That's you, you really think you really think the podcast is going to change the outlook of the way my last name's pronounced. You're damn right, dude. Like, well, I'll go, I'll lean in hard this week on social media that it's Foster <laughs> Morrow. If so, man, it's lit. Uh, hey, I just want you to know, I just want you to be aware that I will be tweeting from my personal account that I quoted you as saying you are the team that beat in the AFC West. You're not going to say that. Yeah, but it's really funny because in the intro, I obviously talk about I tried getting him to say it, and he's, he was very polished and would not give it to me. But what we're going to do is, with everybody listening, we're going to play into it on social media like he actually said it, unless you know the inside joke. So you are hearing me now saying that Foster claimed that the Raiders are the team to beat in the AFC West, quoted that Foster said it, quoted by Will Compton. Uh, I don't know how much... Uh, my head coach is going to like that. Uh, but obviously, uh, I cannot stop you. But I did not say, I did not say those things. Uh, and, you know, I don't know. If you, want, if you want year 10 to come with the Las Vegas Raiders and playoff Willie, oh, boy. <laughs> I'm I not sure. I'm not sure that is going to be something that helps you. <laughs> One out of the thirty-one teams, but uh, you, you, you do, you do, you, my friend. Hey, I think that was well said in a clip, uh, a follow-up clip that will obviously be followed up with a quote like that once it does the numbers we need it to do. Great. Um, and as far as like year uh, year ten playoff Willie with the Raiders, I don't think you can stop that. No matter if I'm in that locker room or not, you know what I'm saying. Like, if, you, if the boys are doing what I think they're going to do, like, playoff Willie's alive and well come December, no matter if I'm standing on the sideline or not. Like, I get that. I get that. That's, is, that a, is that an alter ego for you? Like, you really, like, you turn it on when it comes to playoff Willie time? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I think. Have the, you hit 2,000, have you hit 200,000 followers on Twitter yet or what? We're getting close. Now, we all know that's just a stepping stone because what we're really going for is one million. But I think I'm close. By the time maybe we're listening, that people are listening to this next Wednesday, I think I might have hit 200,000. Yeah, man. I just, look, I, I, can't, I can't wait for my Busting with the Boys podcast to be on the, the to be, man, it's going to be great. <laughs> we're going to be number one next week with this episode. Matter of fact, now that I think of it, can I pay for a cameo? Of you shouting out my Twitter profile and also listening to the this week's episode of Bustin' with the Boys? Uh, I don't really fuck with Cameo anymore. Uh, but like, I don't know, like How about I Ven how about I Venmo you your how rate? You, like, send, how about you send me a video of you doing ten push ups um with your daughter on your back as held by your lovely wife. Okay. Uh, you send me a video of you doing ten push ups. And I will send you a video of you wanting me to say whatever you want me to say. Okay. Hey, as long as long as as long as I to say obviously not whatever you want me to say. Yeah, I was gonna say as long as it's not that you're the number one team in the AFC West. That we're the best team in the yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no I got you. That I would never say, but yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. And we will run that, but also I'll need you to post it on your Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I don't use Twitter much. I love that. I love that. All right, bro. I, I this was an awesome like side podcast to your podcast that I think people are gonna enjoy. But I love you. I miss you. I hope you're fucking doing well. Oh man, can't wait to see you soon. Playoff Willie, alive and well. All right, brother. God, dude, do you see the smile? <laughs> ear to ear, boys. God, you just you just can't beat good vibes, dude. That was that whole podcast. Yeah, that's that was this whole podcast coming up, but you just can't beat good vibes. Like, oh, they fucking they get me fired up, boys. But without further ado, here is the podcast, the episode, the interview with our boy Foster Morrow. Correct? 
Correct. It's Foster Morrow. Right. It is not Foster Moreau. Stop fucking it up. It is not Foster Moreau. It is Foster Morrow. Oh, welcome to Busting with the Boys. Happy to be here. We're here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wish, like, we would have been on the bus. So the issue was, like, because we had to work with all the tight end you people. And they're like, Greg wants to be uh, here to greet people. And I'm thinking in my head, like, Greg would come to the bus if I could just talk to Greg directly. But we had to set up here because I, I know you would have came to the bus. Yeah, yeah. You'd probably rather be on the bus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's grit. That's grit. But, right there. Well, your chains off your mic. Where at? You got him, Jack? Yeah. Don't tell him he's flexing, man. Those are the Instagram chains. That's, oh, the, stuff that you, that's the stuff that you see on, on the internet. Yeah. The yeah, absolutely. The yeah, story the target, has the targeted ads. ads. Yeah, yeah. Them and Bill? Follow me, man. You'll get some built targeted ads on. Yeah. On you're, a, you're a built guy. Sure am. Sure am. When did you start being a built guy? I think it was last July. I think I'm up for a contract extension. Were they the first people only brand to probably offer you and you're just like, I'll take whatever I can get? No, I talked to a couple of guys. What, man? You, what, man? You think we just give a shot for free know. over here? Come on, man. You never know. Nah, man. We're doing good, though. We're hanging out. They're good people, though. They're good people over there. Tell me how you got uh, conned into doing a, a, a football camp. Oh, man. So for people to understand, Foster was supposed to be on the bus yesterday before we had to set up in a hotel. But my man hits me up with, like, a, just Half an excuse. Ass. He said, oh, I'm stuck in Indiana. And it's like a day before. And I'm like, Indiana? So I just sent him a photo of the GPS. It's like a four-and-a-half-hour drive. I'm like, I get it. Terre Haute, you Indiana. Don't wanna, you don't want to be gritty. Yeah, no grit. No grit. Terre Haute, Indiana, man. It was great. I got stuck up there for a wedding. My, my best friend is named Danny Elling. Uh, college quarterback, good friend of mine. His sister was getting married. I'm practically the mayor of Terre Haute, so I had to be there. Uh, and it was at a country club, and it was a great event. It's like, well, now you're here. It's great. We're ha we're hosting our uh, second annual Danny Edling football camp down here in Terre Haute, Indiana. I'll tell you what, that camp was a fucking mess. But it was very good for the kids. There was like 300 kids there. Oh, dude, it was hot. Enough as workers, or probably not? Absolutely not. I was over there running defensive drills. We had a uh, foyer, foyer, foyer Sada uh, Good friend, led the NFL in tackles last year. Just got a big contract with the Jaguars. He was supposed to be there. His flight got grounded, so he could not make it. So I'm oh. over here running defensive tackling drills. So you're the spotlight. You're the you're the you're the big brother. Man. It was a mess. We just ran out of people. Like Danny would have been okay with me not being there. Is but that why your voice is a little shaky? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. It's good to see you, it's bro. Hot, man. Yeah, it's nice to see you. I but know. I so well. I took him to the airport. Uh, playoff <laughs> Willie. Playoff Willie was... Uh, Getting cut. Yeah, he sure was. Down and out, man. Put it in, though. The only reason we got there. The only reason what? we got there. The reason y'all lost, too. Big comp. Tell you. Big comp. Big comp. Dude, uh, so when I did get cut, I was at the facility and everything, and I was about to get a ride from somebody that worked with the organization. And I see Foster, and he's like, where are you going? Who's taking you to the airport? I'm like, oh, they're about to... About to bring, bring the black car around right now. He's like, ah, oh, I got you, man. We were at the airport. It was a good little trip, though. It was, man. I probably talked too much, but it was good. It was a nice well, trip. Well, I get to learn a little bit more about you. You remember the first time we met? Yeah, yeah. What, what was it? It was, well, it was just in, in the cafeteria? Yeah, in I Oakland? thought you were, like, autistic. Yeah, well, no, I just, yeah, it's hey, rookie year, man. This is, this is no joke. Oh, um, we're sitting in the cafeteria, and I'm new, so I'm just sitting around the boys. I think, I, I forget what kind of stories we were telling. I'm sitting there listening. But Foster's sitting there. I didn't know Foster at all yet. And I felt like Foster was just like looking, either looking at me or he would just come out of nowhere with like weird one-liners. And then dudes might laugh and he wouldn't laugh. And then he'd like look off somewhere else. And when he walked away, I was like, hey. I was like, I, was it Max? Uh, I think we were sitting with Max. Uh, I don't remember who else. Because I think it was yeah. Max. Because I was Max like, was definitely with Max. Because he was I like, like oh, like, bust with the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, hey, Max, I was like, is that uh, that tight end guy? Is he a rookie? He's like, oh, Foster? Yeah, he's awesome, dude. I was like, yo, is he dead serious? I was like, is he like on the spectrum or something a little bit? And he just starts dying and laughing. He's yeah, like, no. Of course he did. Yeah. I didn't recognize Will because I, I knew who Will Compton was. He was a big name for me. You know, just growing up, he was just an idol of mine. Out of here, an idol mine. I just, I didn't recognize him with the new teeth, and I knew he was from something. Uh, but uh, shit, I, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know it was you. They just said it was a dude from a podcast that just joined the team. You talking about like one of those dudes who just say like random shit and they stick with whatever they're saying, 
You know what I mean? People might laugh or you might know it's a joke. Foster like never gives off the vibe that it's a joke. So I was thinking like, and I didn't mean it. Like I wasn't trying no, to be no, funny when I not. said it yeah. either. Max just starts dying and laughing. He's like, no, that's just him. Like he's just fucking hilarious. And he'll be in there no matter what's said. If somebody says something and it's like positive, bad, whatever, he's like knocking on wood because the whole knock on wood if you're with me thing. Yeah, man, I'm with you. It's good. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. New coach still doing it. I know. How is that? He's good. He's good. No, very detailed. Let's elaborate. Uh, yeah, I mean, you we got can, three yeah. keys. To, you got three team keys every day. Uh -huh. Three keys. That's like the uh, Patriot way. Oh well, we do. We're, we're the Raiders. We're the Raiders. We're, I know, but he came from. We, I know, I know. It's, there, there is an emphasis, though. You know, I mean, um, that's where he made his name. He made his name in Foxborough with New England. Um, with tight ends. Uh, certainly. With guys like Hunter Renfro. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Come on now, dude. No, he's it. It's been really good, dude. Like he's, he cares, dude. He's detailed. Like he, he's got the tools. Like you can feel he's got the tools. And with John, like John, you could always kind of feel that presence, you know, that aura. You were there with him. Like yeah. he would just, he would just get up there and he'd monologue and he'd just be himself. Um, and you're like, yo, John Gruden. The like you said, the aura, the vibe around him. It's like, oh, he's just up here talking and like doing this John Gruden thing that you watch on the quarterback show. And he's he's never changed. Yeah, exactly. Who he is on that show, who he is in the locker room, who he is on national television, it's he's the same guy. Yeah. He's never changed. He, he yeah, he he's never changed. Yeah. For good or for worse. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh you were talking about McDaniels, you're you were just talking about how John would stand up there and he would speak, and then you were talking about how detailed and how McDaniels has the the skill set. Is there something where he's standing up speaking that's different? Not particularly, but uh, you just feel there's um, there's intent. There's intent to the message a lot of the times. Uh, and not to say John didn't have that, but it's uh, it's kind of overemphasized right now. It's good, man. Like I, I'm I'm enjoying it, and uh, like the coaching's hard, but it's good. It's where we need to be. Like we need to take the next step, and uh, I think he could try to get us there. How was the transition away from uh, our boy Basaccia? Rich, man. I miss Rich. I know. I miss Rich. I, I called Rich the other day. He's doing well. He's down there in Florida with uh, with his wife and his dogs, and he's just hanging out. Uh, it's it, it was a good transition. It, it was good. And uh, I, I think we could have kept Rich. I think we could have, but it, it might have split allegiances in a certain way. Like, so many people felt so strongly about Rich. We just needed a, we just needed a start over. We just needed a refresh. He's one of the best special teams coaches in the league. And he was a damn he good head coach. Stuff, so I think it was like $2 million in Green Bay. Yeah, he's, and he was a damn good coach when we had him. Head head coach when we had him. Uh, and you know you know better than most. Uh, but he, he's a special human being, and, and we miss him like crazy. He's awesome. Yeah. Are you excited to get in this McDaniel system with the whole double tight end, everything else? You look out around there. I mean, you got you. You got Darren. Like, both the boys are coming up in contract situations. Um, are you excited to go into, like, this system in this year? Yeah. Uh, I definitely am. Um, I, again, dude, it's it's detail like I've never had, and it's that's what guys told me who've played like detail. Like, give an example of detail that you've never had. So, like, just talking about how to. I mean, I've known not how that to, old coaches didn't have it. It's just how it's just uh, it's just emphasizing on stuff a lot more. Like when I was a Green uh, a Green Bay reporter called when they just hired Basaccia, and they were talking about. Why do you think Basaccia is a better would be a better special teams coach than whether whoever was there or why he, they wouldn't have messed up and gave up this pump block or whatever else? And there's like all these like uh, there's ways of remembering things like associative like where things just second nature and how Rich just always does such a good job. You're always aware of whatever situation you're in because it uh, didn't look good when the, an old buddy didn't step out of bounds when he grabbed that ball in the Bengals game. Yeah, but it's details like that to where you know when you're in that particular situation because you're hitting it home all the time. Not to say old coaches don't, not to say every coach doesn't harp on it, but there are some coaches who like live in certain details often a lot more and get very specific. So like, what are like details that you're like referring to when you say there's a lot more detail than you've ever had? So like for me, a lot of the times I I, I know the coverage and like I pay attention. I'm, I'm looking for role, I'm looking for safeties. Like I'm trying to discern what's going on when I'm route running. A lot of the blocking stuff kind of takes care of itself off the mic point and whatnot, but um, we're not really we're not really running shit as like independent contractors anymore. 
Like we're meeting, mm. we're meeting as a team. Like it's not really position groups. It's not this, like we're meeting as an offense and we're watching the film together. And like, everyone's getting the same correction. We're all going off the same thing. So, so you're here with the wide receivers being taught. You're here with exactly. the running backs being exactly. told. So everybody's like, okay, this is why I have to manipulate my route or so technique like, a little better. Like I'll hear our OC who also is coaching tight ends and receivers a little bit. His name's Mick Lombardi, uh, 32 year old, brilliant, brilliant coach. Um, and I'll hear some stuff that he's talking to Tay about, right? He's talking to Devontae Adams. We got Devontae Adams on our team, by the way. <laughs> Telling you. Tay, uh, Vont, fa Vont for people who are close to him. He loves to go by Vont. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll hear Mick telling guys like, hey, how about you like counterattack his leverage, go to his outside, and then break across, see if you can't spin him around and then take it across the field. And so me, I'm thinking like, that's detail that I don't really have in my bag. And sometimes I'll, I'll do it not even. Oh, I love bag talk. I'm telling you, like not thinking about it, but like guys have guys have a bag. And like my bag is very shallow. It's like, hey, fuck you. I'm going to go get the ball over your head and there's not much you could do about it. But yeah. like, if I could make it easier on myself to where it's not like, hey, fuck you. I have to go get this ball on top of your head and you can't do anything about it. Yeah. It's like, hey, fuck you. I'm going to spin you around and look really nice and pretty and cool and then just catch a ball nice and easy in the back of the end zone. And knowing that's what that Josh and Mick are doing. There'll be a method to the madness behind you doing something like that. Yeah. The moment you do it, don't worry. We're, we're going to grab that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be oh shouting from the rooftop. Oh, my guys, guys, man. All right, boys. We interrupt to bring you Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon, no free shout outs, number one, but Duke Cannon deodorant is made for guys who run hot. Their dry ice, whether it comes in that light blue cap or that black cap, my favorite is that black cap, that black cap scented one. I forget what the name the scent is, but that is what I use on the daily. Um, it's my, uh, these are my favorite products as far as the big ass brick of soap. It's a go-to. I have the sandalwood scent. I want to say it comes in the bush light in the Bush Latte case box. The, that big ass brick of soap is all hands on deck in the little in the little scrunchy thing. What's it called? The little case? The scrubber. The scrubber. You put in a case that it's also a scrubber. So all you gotta do, obviously just start scrubbing yourself and it makes soap. It's insane. The boys gave me a tip on that not too long ago, but also I have that sandalwood scent on deck in uh, liquid form as well. In case I'm getting a little, in case I'm a little too lazy and I don't wanna wait for it to, wait for the suds to come up or I don't want to, you know, have to scrub a little bit more. I might just throw some liquid on that loofah. Uh, but that and their cologne, the sandalwood, all my favorite scent is the sandalwood, is the sandalwood. That is my favorite. I like all of them, but when I smell them side by side, I show my wife side by side. She likes the sandalwood the most as well. I go with the sandalwood. I also use their hair, their hair wash, their thickening hair wash. I think it is safe to say your boy has been looking like this and thinning for the last few years. But in the last two years, I've used our thickening shampoo from Duke Cannon. Did I say pampoo? No. Thickening shampoo. Uh, I've been using their thickening shampoo way before they even sponsored the podcast. So I think it is safe to say that it thickens your hair and it's kept this hairline going for the last couple of years when I thought it was fading very fast. They also have beard care, hair styling stuff, all of it. Go to Duke Cannon at any target or DukeCannon.com and use code BUSSIN. B-U-S-S-I-N for a generous 15% off your first order. Duke Cannon, it's for the boys and they're not for clowns. So go to DukeCannon.com right now and use code BUSSIN to get 15% off. Back to the episode. Alec, bro. Yeah. You yeah. guys are like boys. You guys were the hey, duo. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah, he Bash Angel. bros. How sad were you when he didn't get extended with the Raiders upset, or him but, going to Miami? Yeah, I was upset, but we could kind of, we, we saw the writing on the wall, at least Alec did. You, you know him, he's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. Um, And he was kind of one of the obvious contracts that they were just kind of talking. Um, we knew he was going to be expensive, right? And um, credit to him for knowing knowing what he's worth. And uh, he went down to meet up with my old tight ends coach, Frank Smith, down in Miami, who's an excellent, excellent coach. And um, I think uh, I think they're going to use him. I think they're going to use him well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. excited. He got a bag. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to boy Alec, man. You want everybody to get a bag, but isn't it crazy? Like the longer you go, you're gonna you're gonna realize like the guys who are around you, like they, everybody does their own thing, they disappear, and then you realize like, oh, I'm the I'm like the only dude left, or yeah, I had yeah. to go and take my talents elsewhere. Happens, man. It you, happens. That's you, the that's the nature of the league. We need some bulletin board material, man. How you feeling about your bag? Bulletin board material, my bag. It's getting deeper, man. But I, I got a I got a lot of work to do. I and I gotta I gotta just stay in shape. 
keep my fucking head down. You know there's news out there about you. News. Yeah, you type in Foster Moreau and hit news. There's some rumors that go on out there. Really? Whether or not they're true or not, trade to the Packers, potential trade to the Packers. Wow. What are they going to do? Because Darren Waller is one of the top tight ends of the league. Not saying you're not. Uh, Darren Waller's going to be up for a new deal. Yeah. You're going to be up for a new deal. How are they going to uh, keep these weapons? And McDaniel's new offense. There's stuff swirling out there. Man, is there anything, that's a lot of news. Anything we can address to the to the great folks at home? Well, no, Washington? man, absolutely not. Man. I got nothing. I'm just going with them. Man, look, hey, honestly, uh, and I don't know how, like, good I feel about putting this into the media, but, like, I'd take less money to win championships. Like, it, obviously. You're I only hurting the boys doing that, but. I know, yeah. Like, I'd yeah, like, man, you come down. on. I, I want to, like, I want to win. Um. And that was always the goal. It was, it was, and everyone will say it's like never the money, but I don't know. Like Renfro just got paid. How do Renfro? Hey, and shout out fucking Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro just got paid. He did, great, bro. Great friend of mine. God, great friend of mine. He got paid. Hunter Renfro got a bag. Uh, and then he went immediately from signing his contract. He went back to his house. I took him. I'm a big take guys to the airport. Uh, picked Hunter up from, from his house, took him, took him to the airport. And I was like, where's your, where's your seat? He's like, oh, I think it's like, I don't know, 37E. And I'm like, you're sitting in the middle row of 30, you just signed a, I don't know, you just got a $9 million contract bonus. I, I, I don't I mean, know. It was like, he's averaging over 10 a year, I think, right? Yeah, definitely. I yeah. think he gets 16 a year, I believe. Yeah, let's yeah. go. He's, but he's sitting in he's he's 37 e He's sitting in 37E. He's not, it's, Guy's not changing. He's but not he changing, bro. He, I mean, just I I just spoke about it a little earlier, but I mean, he could have he could have gotten more. He well, same with same with Derek Carr. Like, I don't think there's nothing wrong with you saying that. Like, it's just yeah. it, is, it is what it is. Like, yeah. a priority to you yeah. is winning. Yeah, I think I think, you know, Derek probably took a little less, and Hunter probably took a little bit less, and Tay might have taken a little bit less, and like I don't know. It's just I, I think I think guys just want to win. And I think that's just the key to a team culture. And I know that's not like fun busting with the boys podcast material, but you know, it's, that's your uh, truth, brother. Hey, speak your truth. This, this is what it is. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get mine though. I'm going to get oh, mine and yeah, it's going to be good. It's, it's going to be good. You know, it, all that shit works itself out, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And, and speaking of winning and the weapons that have been added to, to the fucking boys in silver and black, you already spoke on it. Vaunt. And is that it? He's Vaughn. 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 Vaughn Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Waller, Foster Moreau, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, Derek Carr, the old line you guys have. Like, yeah. Are the boys the team to beat in the AFC West? It's a stag division now. Boy, I'll tell you what. But are you feeling like I, wouldn't, was... I wouldn't say that if you paid me to say it. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say here. it if you paid me to say it. Oh, man. Look at this. Can I get a dad hat? Can I get a daddy hat, please? Just some oh, real nice. Oh, you and fucking. Are you from? Are you close with uh, Rob Tunyon? Uh, no, not at all. I always isn't he a junior though? Rob Tunyon Jr. I think he's a junior. Yeah. yeah, I think he's a junior. Nice pull. But I always think you guys are in on something because you guys both fucking text me, call, refer to me as daddy in text messaging. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think you guys are both fucking with me. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the best words in the English language. It's fucking hilarious. It makes people more uncomfortable than any other word in the dictionary. It's like it, at first it, it wouldn't, but when it just continues to happen, you're just like, all right, man, what the fuck? <laughs> How fucking uncomfortable do you get? That, 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 yeah, like, your face is red. You feel it? Yeah, oh, no. I, you feel yeah. the energy in here? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? He's like, what well, room number are you in, daddy? I'm yeah. It's like, motherfucker. Dude. dude, it fucking, oh, man, it fucking kills so Raiders, me. number one team in the AFC West. I, absolutely not. We didn't say that at all. We got a lot of work to do. <laughs> We got a lot of work to do. Dog, but you got to uh, and continue to say no comment and everything else. I'm just going to speak loudly on it, think out loud. But I'm fired up. I'm fired up to stay in the boys all year long. And, you know, you never know what I have. Maybe playoff Willie, he makes a, an appearance in late December. But I can't wait to root for you guys. Like, I think bringing in McDaniels has been huge. I think you guys have the pieces in that type of offense. I'm sure everybody talks about all that bullshit. But knowing you guys in the locker room, I've spoken of it before. You guys are like the locker room, the way the players are with each other in there, the player led locker room and the vibes around that facility. You guys just have a, a good culture of players. Thank and you. I know. And that's, that's crazy to say. I'm sure people will be you're going on. And you're, and you were part of it. 
I appreciate you, you that. Help, you help build that culture. I feel like uh, people probably say comment on it and everything else, talking about what the 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 tragedies that happened throughout the year with certain players, whether something with like a DUI, uh, the wreck, um, to where it's like, how's it a player led locker room or a good player locker room? Like just of all the locker rooms I've been around. The Saints had a really good one when I was there. The Titans have a good one. Yeah. Uh, but like the just the vibe around you guys, I'm excited to root for you guys for real. And I feel like you guys have added fucking, I mean, Devontae Adams, like wow. you can't help Ch Ch Chandler Jones. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like Max going in. He yeah. just got re up. Max sure just got did. a fucking sure good. Sure did. Sure did. Sure did. Denzel Perryman. Like, GP, unbelievable. You guys just got some cats, man. I'm just fired up to watch you guys. So, yeah, you don't have to say you guys are the, t the team to beat. I'll fucking say it. I think the Raiders are the team to beat, but you guys are in an insanely hard division, too. We sure are. Yeah, guys are re-upping everywhere, and, and everyone's making pushes to try to win. Uh, but I, I, I agree. I, I won't say much about the football thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't do that, because you don't want to be I, I know this. I'd be, from the, I'd be I'd be on a poster. I don't want to be on a poster. And but, coming from the Patriot way, that's like a media thing is huge in there now. Like, don't fuck no, it. I don't think we do that. No, no I'm pretty no, sure you guys no, do, that. do It's that. all good. No, no. But uh, I will say, I will say, uh, we do have a great locker room, um, and it's just it's led by the guys who have been there through the years, um, and uh, it it's probably the best locker room I've ever been in, just just in my life, just with. Guys that actually legitimately care about each other. Yeah. Um, and I'll do, yeah, I'll do anything for those guys. And we just, we actually, like, we hang out outside of the facility. And everyone's got money. Everyone's got family. Everyone's got kids and shit to do. Like, no one wants to, no one wants to be out the house. They want to be at the, at the crib, playing games, hanging out, eating food, watching shit. Uh, but, like, it's fun, dude. It, it's a lot of fun. We care about each other. And we're in a dope city. We're in a cool. Yes, are. We're in a and cool And them city. facilities are way better than Oakland's. <laughs> so, oh. Fuck. You guys got that. Hey, bad. them facilities in bad. Oakland? Bad. Alameda? Shout out Alameda, but good God. Shout out Alameda, no free shout outs, but wow. Yes, bro. Bad stuff. But you guys' facilities now, like, I don't know, I'm rooting hard for you guys. Thanks. And I think another uh, another thing, too, is like you guys have had, correct me if I'm wrong, but a good sturdy class, draft class that you guys had. Like, oh, you guys yeah. just lost Alec, but you guys have all... I think it's been built off that, like, good fucking dudes who, like, love ball. Like, I think it's been not just built around your draft class, but I think dra that draft class, like, yeah, obviously is really helped you guys years, out. We have three pro bowlers in their first three years. We got three from the 2019 class. Unbelievable. Like, the, yeah, can't speak enough about those guys. We need and to get you one. I'm working on it. One now. Josh McDaniels, he's going to get me there. I tell you what, he's going to make you black those motherfuckers in uh, L.A., Khalil Mack and Bosa. Those guys are good players. Those guys are good, those guys are good players, man. Yeah, I got. I think I got. A, I think I got a holding call on Khalil Mack last year on the fucking one yard line. So that was that was fun. And I probably did some where Joey fucked me up, but that's good, man. It's all fun, man. It's good. Like it's good. all ball, bro. It's competitive, man. I'm not all ball, I swear, but I'm on fucking high alert. <laughs> And you come from a program like LSU. Like, let's hear some LSU stories, man. What uh, years were you there at LSU? Uh, I was at LSU from, I just missed the national championship, 2015 to 2018. You built the culture. You see what they did. Oh, yeah. It was all me. All yeah. me, man. Yeah, for sure. So you didn't play with Joey B? I did for one year. For one year, yeah. He didn't make it happen then. You guys didn't make it happen. Oh, it was me. I didn't make it happen. It was on me. Why is that on you? Oh, dude, Joey B took us to seven overtimes nearly by himself. Guy had, uh, oh, well, Devin White played a big role in it, uh, but dude, the guy had like four passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns, took us to seven overtimes. We thought we won the game three fucking times by that point, but uh, apparently not. And then here, here's the best part of the story. We lose in seven overtimes to a team that scored on the last second or on the last, their last opportunity, like three straight times. Uh, we get on the plane to fly back. There's a thick fog in Baton Rouge. We can't land. So we land in New Orleans, which is like an hour 10 depending on how fast you're driving. I know some people who it's not an hour 10. Uh, we land in New Orleans. The buses aren't there. We have to wait an hour 10 for the buses to get there, drive an hour 10 back. By that time, it's like, I don't know, 5.30 in the morning. We don't get that extra NCAA, like, like competitive day because we get there at 5.30 instead of 6. If we would have gotten there at 6, they'd have to give us, like, Monday or Tuesday off, but we didn't get the luxury. Not in LSU. 
I forgot you played with Devin White too. Fuck. Yeah. You guys had some dogs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. D. White was certainly one of them. What was it like playing at LSU? It was a fucking roller coaster. It was a trip. I mean, goons go through LSU. Oh. Not that you're not a goon, but what's it like being around the goonies in the in the Bro, LSU locker room? Those guys are fucking different. Oh man, I I got punched in the face in that locker room more times than I could fucking count. You do got a story of getting punched. Now it's all coming to memory. Oh man, it was. Can we tell it? Oh man, it was good. It what's was your good. best fight story at LSU? Man, all right, all right. So I won't. I, yes, well, I can't. I can't say too much. But I will you say. Go, let's just let me just say player X. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. right, well, 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 I'm going to get these details. I'm having, a, I'm having a fucking week. It's my like post freshman season spring football spring football camp, uh, and we're just like having a blast. We're balling out, having so much fun. And so I go on Tuesday, and I can say this because I'm I'm tight with him. Me and me and Jamal Adams were scrapping out at practice, right? And we were scrapping out at practice, and the whole defense kind of mobbed me and ripped me off because. Les would have made us run. He'd have made us run these things called perfect sprints. And that's how Les talks sometimes. Uh, we love be, it. Any of the boys that are going to hear it, they're going to laugh at that. We'd be doing, we'd be doing perfect sprints if, le- if we fought too much. So, like, the defensive guys were ripping me off. And, uh, and it, wasn't, it wasn't any fights where helmets were throwing off. But, like, yeah, we were scrapping. and just We were getting the energy. That's just, bro, that's just spring practice, right? And so we go, and on Thursday, uh, Leonard gets up. And Leonard and I weren't particularly close. Fournette, Leonard Fournette. Okay. He gets up and he's like, grown man. Sure is, sure is, still is. Yes. Has been for a while. But he looked that way in college. Uh, he looked that way in high school. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. No, he's a grown ass man. Um, he goes, man, look, Foster's out there. He was the only one scrapping. The entire defense mobbed him. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? We going to, we going to, you just going to cower away and be, be a bitch? No, we ain't doing that. Uh, so he goes, uh, we're going to fight today, and I expect every motherfucker in this room, coaches included, to be on their ass, right? And so... Are the, is the offense getting juiced up? Oh, yeah, we're getting hyped, right? So we ran a little counter, like a little wide counter play to the left, and one of my boys came through and, and hit a dude, and they started scrapping down the field. And I'll tell you what, everyone, including our offensive coordinator, dead sprint to the pile. It was like we had, yeah, we had planned to jump. It, it was fucking hilarious, dude. It was, it was so bad, but... Uh, you all jumped in with the uh, defensive dudes ass? Just whoever it was. Yeah, whoever was there. Whoever was in the mix. Whoever was there. Like, there was a... My, I, was, I was just on the ground, like, Joe gonna do it, and it was my boy, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And then he was sitting in my locker waiting for me with a fucking lead pipe, and I'm like, that one's, yeah. not gonna... The not, same day after that practice? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And what happened? Bad news. Bad, nothing. I went and got a workout in. He can't. So yeah. he, he came in. Come on in, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Bring, uh, do we got that chair? Yeah. You, you can bring in a chair to sit. Um, I was in the wrong, mind you. Uh, this, so man got hit out of, him. this man got hit out of nowhere. You're choking him. And yeah. then you go into the locker room after practice, and he's sitting at your locker with a lead pipe. So we had the hangers. We had hangers. Like, no one had hangers in the fucking locker room, but we had, like, these bars, right? over the top that if you took it out, it basically just turns into a, a lead pipe. So he's just sitting in my locker with a lead pipe, like, hey, let's fucking get it on. Would I think that he was swinging the lead pipe at me? Probably not. If he was losing, maybe. But what was your decision when you saw that he was holding the lead pipe at you? I liver? looked, he didn't see me, he was holding the lead pipe, and he was ready. Dude was dressed to fight. I was like, shoes off, put his tennis shoes on, uh, shirt off, he's still taped. I think he went and taped his fingers. And I'm like, I'm not ready for this. I'm still in, and this is foreshadowing. I'm still in cleats and my shoulder pads. I'm gonna go hit it to the fucking weight room and get a little pump in after this Thursday's practice. So he comes to the weight room and he's like, he kind of de-escalated. He's like, look, man, do that shit again. Like, I'll hurt you. I'll hurt you. I'm, I'll put that on my daughter. And I'm like, all right, man, my bad. My bad. That's my bad. My bad. My bad. That's oh, my, not me. All right, that's I wasn't even there. Yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah, put shit on your family. I'll probably back down. For but, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Saturday rolls around. I was gonna say, I know there's more because um, we have our we have our scrimmage in Tiger Stadium, and uh, one of our backs catches a route in the flat, and I just ran a corner, and so I come back and peel a linebacker's face off, right? Peel his face off, and uh, he, I'm sure he doesn't see you coming. He sure didn't. He sure didn't. Mouthpiece went flying. He almost did a somersault backflip. 
Uh, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, but then, like, the entire defense lit up. They loved it. They're like, oh, we're going to jump you. We're going to jump you. We're gonna, well, that's what we're doing. We're going to fuck you up. Yeah. yeah we're going to jump you. We're going to fuck you up. It's so, like, I'm lining up. I'm like some fucking 18-year-old white kid from New Orleans, Louisiana, Jesuit High School, private Catholic high school. I'm like, fuck. Oh, man, it's about to be crappy. My dad, my dad told me, hey, look, look, just swing and fucking run. Dad told me, you're getting jumped. Swing, run, don't go to the ground. I said, all right, bet, bet. So I get back to the locker room, and guys are like, look, walk in with me. We'll make sure it's a one-on-one. -on -one. No one will jump. I'm like, nah, man, fuck that. Fuck that. I'm walking through the side entrance. Fuck that. So this guy, so this guy walks up to me. Uh, he's probably a little concussed, but he goes and uh, he's like, let's go. And I'm like, all right, I know this is coming. I knew it was coming. Take my pads off, right? I'm going to take my shoes off. Took my pads off. Second, my pads were off my body. Put them to the side. Turn back and look at them. <sighs> Left hook. Left hook. Smoked you. Right here. Clean right here. Oh, brother. So he was sitting in there, and he was like, all right, let's go. And everybody was dressed for the Everybody, fight everybody, everybody was going to square it up. And he you're like, ready. all right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, he was ready. And there were people man. circling around. Him down. Oh, oh, no, no. I was kind of by my life. It was actually, it was a lot less tone than what I thought it was. But Actually, that's good. I'm missing this. I, he walked up in the front, right? And then the guy with the lead pipe from before walked up on his on his left, right? And to his other side was a good was a good friend of mine. And I'm like, what the fuck, what man? What the fuck are we doing here, man? This is ridiculous. Um, okay, there was an offensive lineman. He's like, oh, so you knew this day would come. There's a good. I'm sorry. I've never shared this story publicly, but there's a good friend of mine. Uh, he started singing um, Kevin Gates. He started singing, uh, there's a few wrong ways, and they don't make a right. New both ways, you know, are wrong. And they're all right. So, bro, I was, I can never, I'll he never forget singing. that. He started singing because he knew what was about that, but he goes, there's a few wrong ways, and they don't make a right. And so I started, bro, I was, I was, like, I think back on it, I laughed, but, like, in the moment, I was fucked. He threw a left to call me clean. I'm bleeding. And I look at him and said to him, most pussy shit I ever said in my life. I said, you good now? Oh, I said, you good no. now? And he goes, so he smokes you, you just sat there. Yeah, you good yeah, now? I, I, no, I, I, You're buckled, coming out I buckled back and I'm bleeding and I'm like, you good now? And he's like, bro, charge me. Same left hook though. Ducked it, grabbed him and we fought. I'm in cleats, right? And we're on tile sliding across the fucking bathroom floor. We hit the wall, I bang his head against the wall, and by that point, a walk-on putter came and broke up the fight, right? Came and broke up the fight. He almost got jumped because he broke this fight up uh, that everyone was just waiting to see. Like, it was either I was going to get my ass beat or, like, I was going to fucking fend for myself, right? Oh, dude, it was fucking terrible. So I just <laughs> go to the training room, go to the training room, grab some fucking paper towels, wipe my shit clean, and I'm like, and I get a bag of ice. They're like, what happened? I'm like, I slipped and fell. The old slip. Yeah, and fell. I slipped and fell. They're like, oh, all right, whatever. It didn't hey, It's matter. like our first fight story that's been told on Boston, man. It wasn't bad either. Yeah, no, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It getting, was a good time. I'm getting smoked. I love the, uh, are you good? Yeah, I said, you good? You just, fuck that. Same left hook. I got pot. Yeah, he was one for two on significant strikes. I was one for <laughs> one. It's not a big deal, but like, no one's keeping track. I don't know who wins that fight, but. Speaking of, uh, I don't know why I'm fighting in Max Crosby, the kid loves the UFC. Fuck, he does, yeah. But Max wanted me to let you know he's out working you today. Uh, Max is, uh, man, I almost said. Here, here, here we go. Matter of fact, I have, uh, I have notes from Max. Whatever, whatever you're saying. Uh, I caught two flights today, Max, and I made sure not to check. I made sure not to check my bags so that as I was walking through the airport, I could do shoulders and grip work. And I guarantee he wasn't doing that today. No way he was doing that much extra. He it's said, a Wednesday. It's Max's off day, actually. He's probably eating uh, halibut at home with his wife and his three dogs. He's got a dog that looks like a fucking alligator. The thing is so nice, but it's scary as fuck. He also wanted me to mention his dominance against you in 2K, as well as walkthroughs before practice. <laughs> he's, the, he's the worst walkthrough player I've ever played with in my fucking life. Bro, I, like, all right, here's the thing. Here's the thing with this motherfucker, all right? 
He'll go. He'll he go. Didn't and, say that'll get him going. He'll go and. Oh, here's the man, thing with that motherfucker. No, that, I love. I love him to death. He's one. Of, he's one of my best friends. He probably will be for a very long time. Uh, but he'll go and like. Obviously, I'm just trying to do my shit right. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to get ready for practice. And this motherfucker is sprung up, ready to go, going nearly full speed at every junction of the day. So we're going. And I go to like just give him a little jam, like a little chip as I head out to the flat, right? One of those little jam chip flat routes. And uh, I go and he flashes and spikes inside. And as he spikes inside, he's like, don't reach. I'm like, it's a fucking walkthrough. <laughs> like, and so I come back, he goes, nah, man, you're hot. Like, obviously you're mad. Like, you're obviously mad. I'm like, you were talking. Was he you charged up when he's saying this to you? Yeah, I think he was probably just trying to get under my skin. You don't and think he worked. was just being you don't think he was being competitive? No, I think he was just being a dickhead because he knows he can be. He knew he knew he was getting under your skin. Oh yeah, he knows how to get under my skin. Bro, when I came, I had to be like the uh uh like in the walkthroughs, I had to be the service tight end. You know the boy, I don't got the longest arms. But this man, Max, would literally just fucking throw me, dude. Yeah. And I'll bet, hey man, cut that shit out. Yeah, no, you don't. Because there'll be times where I get up and in, I'm like, oh, oh, and then just, <laughs> just kind of fuck with them. He's like, oh, that's so what you're doing. That's what you're doing. He's so mad. And then he'll fucking lock me so mad, like, hey, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, no, bro. He'll that. long arm you and he'll rip you and he'll make you look. He'll make you look stupid. That's the reason he paid him all that money. He's a fucking good player. Dog. He's a good he player. He got paid, paid too. Yeah, as, as I'm he fired should. up for him. As he should. Me too. Me too. 2K, nah. 2K, he's nah. He's He's really not. He's really not like that in 2K. All right, let's talk about 2K now. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's not like that in 2K. Would you guys play online? Oh, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have any lag, though. He, he doesn't play gritty, bro. He doesn't play gritty. He shoots a bunch of threes. He doesn't want to bang in the post. Man. Yeah. He really doesn't. He's just getting out the way. He's, nah, he's a bitch. <laughs> Dog, um, how would you rank your friends in the locker room? How would I rank them? Yeah, one top three. For the boys to see. Top three. Because this will go in the group chat. I know. I, I got to be... I got to be really, really locked in. So I'd say, um, I'd say Amik Robertson, number one, Amik Robertson. I know you don't know who that is, but he's a, he's a. You're talking me for a loop right now. He's a 14, he's a 1475 Raiders way legend, Amik Robertson, number one guy in the locker room. Following him, probably number two is Duran Harmon, another guy you don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love I love this Duran Harmon guy. Guy always makes it makes it always on time, makes it everywhere he always needs to be. And uh probably Darren Waller. Probably Darren. I'll give you an easy one. I'll give you one that's a little more on the on the Yeah, because you're not choosing the boys, man. You're not choosing, you just said Max, one of your best friends, he probably will be. One of my best friends all the time, yeah. And you you said in the locker room though. That's kind of like outside the locker room, you know? You guys aren't best friends inside the locker room. No, 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 no. Fuck that guy. He made me delete my tweet. What tweet? Um, what he was made that? you delete it, so yeah, you're his. Yeah, he did. You're his. Bitch. Yeah. Sorry. That was I'm, bitch. I'm sorry. He was all up in arms, and I won't put words in his mouth because he said he was getting a lot of heat. Put words in his mouth. But he made me delete that tweet where he, there was that game going out there on that bachelorette party, and they were like, they were like jerking those things. And, <laughs> whoever, whoever scored first. and I wrote that tweet saying, this is Max's favorite game in the locker room. <laughs> Man, he, 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 he was kind of, uh, I feel like looking back, he was sort of hinting and feeling me out to see if he could tell me to delete it. Yeah, yeah. And then 24 hours went by, and the next day, he's like, hey, comp, like, for real, man, I'm going to need you to take that tweet off and stuff like that. I'm thinking, like, bro, bro that was fucking Twitter. You're you a funny guy, man. I don't want to give no. you too much credit. I, I know you don't. I know credit. you don't. Yeah, yeah. But hey, but how you're funny like, was that little dude, fucking? That shit was fucking hilarious. That shit was, was Max's favorite tool in the locker room, man. He He's always so asks you to play after practice. He always asks you to play after practice. <laughs> oh, bro, he, you're a funny dude, man. That shit really fucking. Yeah, no, it was all through our locker room. No, he was. I mean, he wasn't getting bullied, but yeah, he well, it was more it, or whatever. But yeah, he yeah, seemed yeah. like he was taking heat. Like he's like, my dad hit me up, and dude, because yeah, there's obviously a, a bystander that's just taking bullets. Ricochet bullets from that. Of course. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right. Was I was like, all right, bro. God, that was fucking Should we do tear talk? Yeah. What kind of tear talk list you got for us, Jack? Uh, we, yeah. Are you familiar with tear talk? No, I don't watch your shit. All right. No, that's, that's just be disrespectful. <laughs> we interrupt this episode to bring you Wealthfront. 
No free shout outs, Wealthfront. If you're keeping cash anywhere that isn't paying you a high interest rate, listen to the boy right here. Listen good. Watch whatever the case may be. Listen the up. Wealthfront is a saving and investing app that can help you earn more on your money and build wealth for your future. The Wealthfront cash account gives everyone a 1.4% APY interest rate, which is 20 times what traditional banks pay. So if you kept $10,000 in a Wealthfront cash account for a year, you'd be on pace to earn an extra $140 a year instead of like seven bucks. That means while your money earns 20 times more, you can keep saving more, whether that's for an emergency fund, which is super important, a down payment, or your honeymoon to Rome, that is a no-brainer. And unlike, uh, unlike other savings options, you'll always have access to your money thanks to unlimited free transfers, free access to over 19,000 ATMs, and no account fees. Let me say that again, zero account fees. And if you ever want to invest with Wealthfront, you can move your money into the market in minutes to grow it even more for the long term. If you're young out there, definitely look into that because the long, the long game is where you need to be. Getting a cash account is super easy and it only takes a few minutes to sign up and then start earning 1.4% APY interest on all of your cash. And if you start now, you'll get a free $50 bonus with a $500 deposit. There's already nearly half a million people using Wealthfront to save more, earn more, and build long-term wealth. So do not wait. Earn 1.4% on your cash today. Visit Wealthfront.com forward slash bussin to get started. That's Wealthfront.com forward slash bussin. This is a no-brainer, boys, and it's great news because this has been a paid endorsement from Wealthfront. Back to the episode. See my game day outfits? What yeah. are they? What are they? Do you know? Are you a good what friend do you mean or not? I know them. What, what do I, there's, well, if you don't know, then you don't know. It's okay if you don't know. But yeah, I do, I, I, do I, I guess not. I do, I do uh, throwback jerseys of all the teams that we're playing. Or I'll do like, like related jerseys to the teams that we're playing. It's fine. Oh, you're you talking about, you're, 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 you're talking about pregame. Yeah, pregame. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. yeah. Jersey I'm, fits. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking of you dressed yeah. in the, like for, for the actual game. Oh, no. I'm not talking about like your game day fits. Yeah, yeah. Because you've rocked the... Uh, well, we could do rock- throwback jerseys is what I thought he was talking about. Does that one spark your... favorite jersey? I mean, there's got to be one in mind, you know. And if we cross all sports, it's be football, too. Oh, fuck, bro. So you're just bringing, like, let's just keep it NFL because right. I would need time to study. This guy doesn't come prepared to his own fucking podcast. Well, fuck, did what you, you hear doing? all those lists? I'm thinking we might do sport movies. You might be fired up about that one, but you want to do the jersey. No, it's fine. Uh, I'll do I'll do a crossover reference between what you want to do and what I want to do. Uh you see in the movie Semi Pro, Semi Pro, with yeah. Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. Up in uh, let's do sports in Michigan. Let's do sports movies. No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. This past year to the last Denver Broncos game, I wore a uh, Flint Tropics. I wore a Flint, Flint Tropics uh, coffee black jersey, which was a fantastic, fantastic jersey to go to get out of the. What closet. do you do? You just kind of sit and like scroll around. Like, what's your site you go on? You know Rick Slate. Rick Slay. Rick Slate. He's our. He's the old workout guy with the Raiders. The old dude who's always doing kettlebells. You don't know who that is? Okay. This guy doesn't give a fuck, man. Look at this. Put the fucking camera on. This guy doesn't give a fuck. He really doesn't care. He really doesn't care. He doesn't care. Doesn't, doesn't care shit. God, Rick Slate is a legend amongst the Raiders. The Raiders community. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He handles all my jersey shit. What do you mean he handles it? Yeah, we just talk about it. We talk about it, and I go on. I go on. You tell him what you want. Anonymous Chinese websites, and I just go grab the shit. You tell him what you want, he gets it for you? No, we just, we. Oh, we, he gives you ideas. You yeah, guys we, go back, we, you yeah, guys we talk shop. Storm. Yeah, yeah, we talk shop. It's a good, it's a good deal. So you want to do sports and movies? Sure. What, what do you no, got? You go first, guess first, man. I don't know, man. Tier three, you got tier one through three. Three is obviously your number three. Tier two, two. Tier one. Would that be one? Would be your number, would it be your would top be. dog. It would be. Mm. So you can start with three. And if you want to take some time, I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I, I haven't seen all you need that to pull many out your sports phone? movies. What's the, uh, and you guys can help me out, the peanut gallery. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys are what makes it makes it go. I don't take a Don't fan. just go. Oh, fucking sensitive? Man, just... sensitive? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you guys make this show grow. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's peanut gallery, motherfucker. It's, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Which movie are you talking about? Um, 
Look, if somebody pros you're one, then just say it. No, it's not. It's not. It's a funny movie, but like it's not it's not all the way up there for me. Um what's the movie where the boy gets the uh gets the baseball powers and becomes the best pitcher? Rookie no, it's not a rookie. Yeah, rookie of the year. Is it? Yeah, pal. I remember seeing that for the first time. Unbelievable movie. Uh I got a does uh does jousting count as a sport movie? If it's just yeah, I mean it's yeah, in the Olympics, uh, right? Is it? I don't think people do. Fencing. Fencing is in the Olympics. Jousting is like ancient, an ancient medieval practice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We know about sword fighting. I think there's a thing Hunter Renfro likes called medieval times. You're talking about the one with the. Uh, you ride a horse the, and you fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what movie? Are you talking about the one with the um, fucking the Joker? Yes, Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah Heath Ledger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Night Tales is your sports movie? That's what it is. Guys, I don't really fucking know, but I just had a great story to connect it uh, just because it was a sport to me. So I went outside, went outside after I watched that movie for the first time, and I was fucking fired up, man, right? So I go, and I take my little fucking Razor scooter, and we had an old mailbox in the back. Brother, I'll tell you what. I fucking took it to that mailbox. My dad came outside. I thought he was going to be pissed. He thought it was the funniest thing he ever fucking saw. He said, look at this fucking oversized eight-year-old on a Razor scooter with a, I took the broom, I took, it was like a rake. I took, I unscrewed the rake out of its fucking stick and was fucking going at it, dude. I was lit. Just I was dude, nice, dude. I was nice as fuck. Did you ever like get the neighbor kids or like compete with it? Oh, fuck, so no, I'd have killed, killed, killed one of those kids. I'd have, I'd have impaled one of those kids. No question. Those kids couldn't fuck with me. Their scooter wasn't as nice. So, so your, your tears out. That, yeah, this. Medieval Times is number three. Uh, <laughs> nice tale. Yeah, whatever it is. Uh, let's go. Uh, what is it? Um, rookie of the year. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Rookie of the year. No, can be I don't say two. sure. This is your list, man. Guys, I don't really. I'm not a fucking huge, huge movie guy. Can, give me your list so I can give some, have some, have some thought. Um. Go ahead. Sit up. You actually care now. Go ahead. Oh, shout out Max Crosby real quick. He actually gifted me a pair of uh, Era Monarchs. He said uh, that these things are too ugly for his feet were the words that came out of his mouth. Right at the front of the facility, right by those three championship trophies. He doesn't deserve to wear shoes like this. I agree. Uh, he goes way too hard and walks through. Yeah, you see the shit that he wears. Like, you see all the jewelry he has now? I do. He, I mean, to be fair, his, like, his eyes sound jewelry kind of, I mean, it kind of blows your Instagram necklace off. Oh, out of the water, but let, we don't really have to talk about that if we don't want to. Well, man wears like five necklaces and like three watches. Yeah, there's yeah, he's bling bling the fuck out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, he, I got paid. He just he did man, good for him. I'm just jealous. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm yeah, just jealous. Yeah, me too. Me too. But I'd say my movies. Now I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a minute because I gotta think. What do you think about Space Jam two? <laughs> no, it's dog shit. What do you think about Space Jam one? Good movie. I'll tell you what, Space Jam 1, the best thing they did in that movie was put Bill Murray in it. Yeah. Favorite actor of all time. That's your favorite actor of all time? All time. It's not particularly close. Wow. Un unbelievable. I felt, I was, I was a nine-year-old kid on a fucking sailboat out of my mind board, and uh, I popped in the movie Ghostbusters, and I fucking fell in love with the humor that Bill Murray has. Uh, he's, he's, my, he's one of my favorites. You're like glowing talking about him. It fires yeah, me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the guy, man. He's unbelievable. I feel like my mix of movies would be like uh, the Hardo movies. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, I think the tier three has to be Friday Night Lights. I thought that was a show. It's also a show, but the movie. Oh, okay. I haven't seen either. Tier two would be Remember the Titans. Gotcha. Tier one. The Rocky series. Boxing does count, doesn't it? Boxing does count. Boxing does count. And Rocky it? is a fucking hitter. I would go Rocky one, two, three. I probably wouldn't go Rocky one, two, three. Uh, four? You don't like four? To me, four is too mainstream. Fuck four, man. Four, four. Fuck four. Four's not with the boys, man. Yeah, like four. Four is like everyone's favorite Rocky movie because it's like oh, you got the steroids, so the Russian. Like, yeah, you want to be different. Like, do you actually know Rocky culture? Like one of those guys. So you want to intentionally be different. Correct. Yeah. Not intentionally, but no, I just no, know. No, I get it. It's cool. No, it's like, uh, you know, when people hear like a popular song and all of a sudden they like love that artist. And you're like, yeah, Yo, you haven't been rocking with that artist for the last decade. 
I know. People are like, oh, yeah. I love Rocky Four, but they haven't seen the other Rocky movies. But they're like, oh, I love Rocky. Mm. Rocky Four was the best one. Mm. But it's was like, it? No, the gritty ones. No, Rocky One is the best. Okay. Rocky Two is a good one as well. Rocky Four would probably go after that. Although I am a big fan of Three because he loses and he's got to get that Eye of the Tiger back. I like that. But bro, in Four, you kill Apollo Creed, like you murder somebody. <laughs> Somebody dies in the boxing ring. Yeah, yeah. If he, and the dude stands there. If he dies, he dies. Imagine this day and age. If a boxer kills somebody in a ring, cameras are everywhere, and the comment is, if, if he, he dies, dies he, he dies. dies. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. It's bad media. That's bad. Like, and then this dude is getting injected steroids, and the average punch for, like, a heavyweight fighter, this could be, I could be way off here, but it might be, like, 1,600 pounds. I don't fucking know. Can we fact check that? You don't fucking know. Uh, uh, don't average... Fucking know. Average, uh, what is it? Fucking average know. punch. Like speed or like, like you know. Like power. Yeah, average you, power of a, of a heavyweight boxer. Do you, know, do you, you know the conversion? But what I'm saying is, there are lots to... Ivan Drago was swinging for like almost 3,000. Over 3,000. Maybe over four. He's killing somebody. Is this some shit you just made up? Is this a free... No, uh, no, no, no. This is something drink? I've thought about before, but it's been a, it's been a while because I'm, I clearly haven't... No, I know you've thought about it before, but like just with the the units of. Uh, there's a boxer hitting someone directly at 1400 psi, which is like, you know, it would be equivalent to being hit by a sports car going 10 to 15 miles an hour. Oh, that's not that bad. Type in Ivan Drago psi. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was on there. But anyway, all I'm saying is like it's just a very far fetched. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I love the soundtrack, and I love the montages. Yeah, if you're not juicing, you're not trying. Quote, Will Compton. 20, quote, to 2021. Yeah, quote, Foster Moreau. Quote, Have you ever dabbled with it? No, absolutely not. I was accused. Have you thought about it? God, no. Fuck no. Never thought about it? Nah, man. Being white, you never thought about it? No. Why were you accused of it? Did you pop? No, I went... uh, I went from high school, I was 225, and I showed up to college, and I was like 265. So you were accused by, like, what, message board people? Uh, my close friends on the football team all accused me. I thought there was, like, some fucking serious accusations. Like, 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 are, like are we typing Foster Moreau PEDs? Like, there's going to be some article of you being accused of it. That's just a, that's just a compliment to me now. Fuck. 100, which is, like, 500, 600 over that. No, I'll watch it. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But anyway, uh, those are my tiers. Rocky, yeah. one. Remember the Titans, two. Yeah. Friday Night Lights, three. Yeah. To give you an idea. Yeah, you can help yeah. you out. Yeah, you can. Because yeah. you don't even know you're number one. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Um, you're blowing the segment, just to put that in perspective. You know, I mean, if I did my homework, like, this would be a lot easier. But obviously, I just wasn't prepared. And that's okay. So do you do you want to go into this and end without a tier one? No, no. What do you got? Just we got some lists. Throw them. Yeah, here, here. What's yours, Michael? Okay, just number one was you took your number of Titans. I was giving you my number. God, he's got a deep ass voice. He does it, the big two, boy. Uh, would have to be Warrior. You see now? That's a good movie. That's a good movie. Mine. Guys, look at some of these fucking. Uh, look at this, some of these fucking. Right, three forty-two. I'm not. Uh, I'm not scrolling. I've seen that. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, it's <laughs> time to need some draft day. Though, so. Draft day. Give me my picks back, you pancake eating motherfucker. Great. What? Movie. You never seen draft day? Yeah, I've seen that. I mean, it's got to give a. Fuck. Come on now, Kevin Costner. Oh, you know what? And it's not. It's not even on this list. But uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Bill Murray. Yeah, Caddyshack. There you go. Caddyshack, number one. Caddyshack, your number one. Rookie of the year, number two. And your number three is, uh, what was it? Nice tail. Nice tail. Handmaid's tail. Medieval times. Whatever, whatever it is. It's good shit. That's going to be a fire list. I can't wait till that goes up. That's a fucking good-ass list. All right, boys. Well, listen, we all know that Will is doing Heat of Titan U. is outstanding. I'm now calling him remotely. I'm still in the Great White North next week, given that my van does not just crap out on me on the dusty trail back then in Nashville, Tennessee. I'll be back. I'll be back on the bus. It'll be absolutely fantastic. I will say, you know, our guests are guests and never going to never going to disrespect our guests. So it's not it's not my place to do that. I uh, got a little off with the Knight's Tale and I really think Will just 
thought of three movies off the top and didn't put a lot of thought into it. It's tough to say that because we're a, we're a podcast that promotes dudes hyping other dudes, you know. But that's just a tough claim. It's a tough. It's gonna do well on the charts because the people love our podcast. People love sports and mostly love football, so people are gonna like it. But I think once we hear these three, you guys are gonna really. It, you might change your mind. So I'll get right into it. My man. My tier three is, in my opinion, an absolute here. It could have actually gone up a little bit, but um, but damn, but damn, I and it's, I want to give an honorable mention to one actually first. My honorable mention is going to go to Happy Gilmore. It's the reason why it's an honorable mention is I didn't think of it naturally. It didn't come to my head right away. And when the boys were talking about it before the show, like, oh, what's this? And then I heard someone ring Happy Gilmore. I, I just couldn't steal it. It wouldn't be enough respect to the game. So for that, it only makes honorable mention. My tier three is going to be a movie that came out in 2011. A Mr. Tom Hardy, a phenomenal actor, is just an alcoholic veteran who comes back into town. Him and his brother used to fight back in the day, and his brother is now a teacher trying to make ends meet for his wife and his kid. The two of them end up getting into a UFC challenge and fight it out for what I believe is 100K and make it all the way to the top and fight each other out. That movie is an absolute tearjerker. The part, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do spoilers, but when Buddy's trying to tell his other brother to tap and he's crying, I'm crying. It's beautiful. And overall, I just think it's a phenomenal movie. That movie is called Warrior. It is fan-fucking-tastic. My next tier is a classic. It's, 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 it'll last forever. A legendary comedian and Chevy Chase, dude. It is so unreal. It's so amazing. Everyone knows the story in the background of my tier two, which is Caddyshack. You can't beat it. Not a golf guy. Personally, not a golf guy. I don't, I don't do it very often. I've actually probably played 18 holes my entire life. It's a, it's a gentleman's sport. It's a game that's meant to be played by people that have made it. And I personally have not. So therefore I can't play the game. But Caddyshack is just, not only is the Mount Rushmore comedic movies, it's in there for the sports as well. So I love that. And my final, my tier one, my number one go-to, the most inspirational sports movie of all time is going to have to go to a gentleman. It's not even pro sports. It's like a minor league hockey and a young man named Doug the Thug Glatt. In the beginning of the movie, he's just a glorified security guard. No one really knows where this whole thing is going to go. Ends up beating the shit out of a guy, goes to a hockey trial, beats the shit out of a whole entire team, and becomes an absolute enforcer. Only to go against the best enforcer hockey's ever seen. Ross the Boss Ray. And that showdown at the end of the movie... Doug the Thug Glatz being so polite the whole time. Ross the Boss Ray has got that Fu Manchu. He's got that smoker's attitude. He's punching the shit out of a cement wall. Goosebumps. Goosebumps every single time. That is my tier one. The movie Goon, baby. Goon one is God tier, in my opinion. I'll be honest with you. Goon two is a pile of shit. It's a terrible movie. And I hate saying that out loud, but it's awful. But Goon one is the most inspirational sports movie of all time. And that's my tears. With that being said, boys, after since you've heard those beautiful tears, let's get back to the episode with the boys. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, this was good. You tried to get me in trouble a little early, but I kind of eased in. It's good. It's good. I think I helped you out. No, it's I, good. I, I sense the fear. So I'm like, oh, he thinks I'm trying to get him. Guys, there's no fear. There's no fear. No fear, no doubt. We covered a lot of stuff. He's all about his uh, movies. He thinks uh, the Raiders are the best team in the AFC West. <laughs> He's going he's gonna to hold out for a new deal. Yeah. A lot of stuff, man. Follow it. Subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. Do I have any? And as always, for the boys. Yeah. Tell as them. always, man. For the boys.